What's up, but it's Rob. This is Apparel Success. And if you don't know who I am, I run a Canadian lifestyle brand called KBud. It's doing about a half a million dollars per year in sales. So I'll help clothing brands like yours get really good results. And you may have heard me talk in these videos saying, you can't just post a t-shirt online and get sales. You gotta do more than that. Do you? Well, in this video here, what we're gonna talk about are two very different paths to success for your clothing brand. And what I hope that you get out of this is that you see the difference in the paths and just how you can really run your clothing brand differently from others and still get results. And then what I also want you to get out of this is to see how it doesn't matter which path you go down, each path is going to require something special to happen with your clothing brand. And I wanna break all of this down for you. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Here it is. Apparel Success is sponsored by my buds over at Design Crowd. You post a project on Design Crowd, amazing designers from all around the world are gonna compete for your project. You choose the winner, then you get that design plus revisions. All these designs here sell like fire through my website and I got them all made through Design Crowd. If you're interested, head over to designcrowd.com forward slash apparel to learn about the special offer that I have for you or just use the discount code apparel when you post a project on Design Crowd. All right, so what are the two different paths to success for your clothing brand? God, that sounds so lame. Paths to success, I hate that. But it's true, there really are two different roads that you can take here. And one of the roads, what it looks like is you create a clothing brand where the concept alone of the brand is unique. It's truly unique and you're going after a market that really hasn't been tapped into yet. So a great example of this is a clothing brand called East Coast Lifestyle here in Canada. They came out with this clothing brand on the east coast of Canada, all of these people living on the east coast of Canada are so passionate about being from the east coast in Canada, and yet there wasn't really a clothing brand for them. And this guy, Alex McLean, came out with this clothing brand called East Coast Lifestyle. And he's from the east coast, came out with this brand, and it was almost like that area, that the whole east coast of Canada was just waiting for a brand like this to come out. And the second he dropped it, just based on the concept alone, people wanted to buy it, wanted to soak it up, and he sold like $12 million worth of clothing in the first year or something like that. And it just blew up. And the reason for that was because he tapped into a market with a unique new brand concept that had never been done before in a market that was almost just waiting for a brand. And the other path that you can take that's very different from this to becoming successful for your clothing brand is where you're not tapping into a blue ocean market and you're not going after a market that's never been tapped into, but instead you're going after a market that already has clothing brands existing within it. And what you're gonna do instead is you're gonna outcompete these clothing brands and offer the market something unique and better than what all of the other clothing brands are currently offering it. And you can do this through your own unique skills that you have for that particular brand in that particular market, or maybe you have resources or a network that you can use to really gain an advantage over the competition. And you know, a great example of this would be if I were to create a clothing brand in the hockey space, there's dozens of clothing brands that already exist in hockey, but you know, I could come out with a clothing brand in hockey where maybe I have a network of NHL players and professional hockey players that I can leverage to get onto so that you know, all the other brands, they don't have that same network. They can't compete in that same way. Or, you know, maybe myself starting that clothing brand, I am an ex-professional hockey player. And just having that brand story, having that foundation would give me an advantage over the competition. Now, what I'm about to share with you might sound a bit harsh, but I think that it's really great advice for new clothing brands just starting up. If you look in the mirror and you recognize that you don't have a ton of resources, you don't have a network of high status people that you can get to wear your clothing so that you can outcompete all these other brands in a space, then I really recommend that you go down that first path where you look for a blue ocean market. Because that's the type of market, that's the type of thing that you can do with your clothing brand where you know you practically can market your brand by just showing the t-shirt itself. Because if your brand concept is coming through the clothing, like the East Coast lifestyle example that I gave you, you know, that's what people were really attached to. It was the brand identity. It wasn't because the brand had, 
you know, being worn by all these cool people and things. It was because of what the brand represented and because they were doing it in a new way. And I think that that's not easy to do, but I think that for most people starting up clothing brands, when you don't have those resources, it's definitely easier to do than trying to outcompete brands in a space that's already saturated where there are a lot of brands trying to do it. And you know, this is why I think that so many people getting started in the streetwear market struggle is because there are so many streetwear brands and it's so easy to just get caught up in streetwear and to try and compete with like a Supreme or something like the amount of people that are wearing Supreme that are high status, the amount of things that they've done to achieve that level of value, that's what you're competing with. You know, I'm not saying you can't compete with it, but I'm saying it's going to be very, very difficult to compete with it. And, you know, that's why coming up with those with those new angles that you can take is sometimes like this sneaky hidden path to success. Um, and that's sort of the route that I've taken. I've also incorporated, you know, my network and getting onto celebrities and influencers and adding all of that value to my brand as well. But I started with a market that hadn't really been tapped into yet. Uh, unique market segment in Canada that was basically just sitting there waiting to be tapped into and I did that with my own clothing brand and then added the value on top of that. And another thing that I really want you to be aware of just so that you're not naive here is that it doesn't matter which path you go down. Something special has to be happening with your brand in order for you to become successful and real economic supply here. You know, you can't create a clothing brand in a market that's saturated where there are all these other brands out there and just put out pictures of your t-shirts and, and ask yourself like, why isn't it selling? Why aren't I successful yet? It's because there's all these other brands out there. Your brand hasn't achieved anything that's sort of above average that would separate yourself, that would get people interested in the first place. And, you know, until that's done, through one of these routes, you're going to struggle to sell your clothing. And, you know, it's not easy to hear, but it's just the reality of it. And the sooner that you accept that, the sooner that you can get working in either one of those areas to really create something amazing for your brand, where you do get amazing results coming in because you've achieved that. And so for my Canadian lifestyle brand, let me walk you through how I've done this. What I recognized is that there was this show in Canada that came out called Letter Kenny. And Letter Kenny was a brand new TV show that was tapping into the rural Canada market. They were talking really funny the same way that people do in rural Canada. And there hadn't really been a TV show to really go after that market that had just been sitting there. The TV show became super successful, but there wasn't a clothing brand going after that audience. And that's essentially the same audience, the same market that I decided to tap into with my clothing brand. And when I did that, because there was no other clothing brand going after that market, it became fairly easy for me to get the ball rolling and to start making sales, especially with my ridiculous clothing brand name, which is Canadian slang, K-Bud. And then on top of that, I worked really hard to get on to celebrities and influencers within this space to really establish the brand as the brand in this space because you know, I knew that other brands would be popping up in this space. And just through using my own network, through working really hard, I managed to get onto dozens of celebrities and influencers to build up a big customer base, to build up a following on social media. And that's how I managed to do it for my own brand. And it's totally possible for you to pull that off as well. I hope that this video is very valuable for you. And if it was, please hit the like button for me. It really helps me get these videos out there. And let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. And if you haven't already, check out my free clothing brand marketing masterclass. All you have to do to get access is go to apparelsuccess.com slash masterclass. You can watch the whole thing for free. And if you've made it to this point in the video, I want to tell you about the closed Facebook group that we have for Apparel Success. There's a link in the description. Follow that link. Join us in the group. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.